a slice of Victorian architectural history. So Richmond Lock and Weir is a grade two star listed building. Uh, the architect was built with all hot rivets, uh, Cornish granite, all the bricks are uh, Staffordshire Blues. So it, it is a, a really good example of late Victorian engineering. Richmond Lock and Weir has gracefully spanned the Thames for 120 years. The attractive design belies its hard working purpose. Richmond Lock and Weir was built uh, to maintain a water level um, due to the fact that when, when the, London, the old London Bridge was removed in 1831, that affected the high water levels in, in Richmond to effect that where it, we used to dra the river used to drain dry and you wouldn't be able to navigate further up the river. Well, 120 years ago, most of the traffic on the river was commercial tugs, barges. So if this lock and wheel wasn't here, then all the freight that was transported to Reading or Windsor or, or wherever you're going upriver, you wouldn't be able to navigate to there because, because the river would, would, would run dry. You'd have to work your tide. It's the furthest downstream of all the Thames locks and is the only one owned and operated by the Port of London Authority. So two hours after high water, the three weir gates are lowered and they act as a barrage and they maintain, the, they stop the tide from going out and maintain the level. So once those three weir gates are in, the only way to transit upriver or downriver is to come through the lock. And the lock is basically a big bathtub with, with, with a plug either end. The Port of London's main role here is to maintain the water level. There's a parliamentary act that we have to maintain that level at all costs. The Port of London Authority operates the lock 24 hours a day, seven days a week, all year round. So we have five lock foremen that work here. Each person works individually on their own on a 12 hour shift in a five man, five man watch shift pattern. And the job is to lower the weirs at, at the correct time and maintain the level. The sluice gates ensure that the water level between Richmond Lock and Teddington Lock is maintained at or above half tide level. Before the lock was built, the river would sometimes disappear completely. I mean, there's evidence of champagne luncheons and cricket matches on the riverbed up, up in the late 1800s, up, up at Twickenham and, and areas like that. The bridge was built and run by the Thames Conservancy before it became the Port of London Authority. The construction was on time and on budget, but no expense was spared. Uh, this bridge was uh, built on budget, £40,000, but um, the uh, predecessor to Port of London actually contributed an, an extra £21,000 to, to, for the decorative work, the iron work, to make it look prettier. The gates have been designed to tilt, so they come, as they come up they, they roll like a garage door, they come up vertically and then they tip over. So if he was travelling in a, in, a, in, a, in a vessel, in a, in a boat, coming upriver or downriver, uh, you wouldn't be able to see the gate hanging in between the two foot ridges. Each of the gates are uh, 66 foot wide, 12 foot high, and in, in that period, uh, that was cutting edge. There was, there was the spans between, it, they were the biggest weir gates of, of their time. This is the drive shaft, which lowers each of the three gates, which weigh 32 tonne each. Um, you would you'd put a crank handle on here and wind it, and the gates would then be lowered. Nowadays, we, we have an electrical motor, so we just need to press a button. So this footbridge, uh, up until 1936, you had to pay a penny to cross it. You can notice at the end there is a, a toll booth. It was the last bridge in mainland Britain that you had to pay to cross. A four million pound refurbishment of the lock and weir was carried out by the Port of London Authority in the early 1990s. But its work doesn't stop. Port of London Authority is, is continuously upgrading and improving and maintaining the lock and weir. And at the moment, on the barge there, we're, we're actually changing nine of the, the fenders, the outboard fenders. The work here is that you need to be a certain type of character. It's a very satisfying job. You, you're dealing with the general public all the time on the phone and it's reaped in history and it's, 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 a, it's a great place to work.